Matt Likens, the CEO of GT Medical Technologies, Arizona Bioscience Company of the Year. Thanks so much. What's been going on at GT Medical Technologies? Uh, well, the business continues to grow, and more uh -huh. and more patients are getting the benefit from gamma tile therapy, which uh, is uh, our purpose to improve the lives of patients with brain tumors, and we're, we're executing on that every day. I'm very proud of that. So, so what makes gamma tile different than other brain surgery therapies? Yeah, so it's really interesting to hear the previous discussion because we call this an elegantly simple approach. Mm -hmm. So, quick review. Mm -hmm. When a person has an operable brain tumor, the neurosurgeon needs to be conservative. So they try to get a maximal safe resection of the tumor. So that's in the brain, right? So if you have a tumor anywhere else in the anatomy, the goal is is you get it all. You look for a healthy margin, right? You don't want anything left because you don't have sensitive tissue around that, typically. In a brain, of course, it's much different. So maximal safe resection. If they're too aggressive, they could have a negative impact on speech, movement, memory. So today's standard of care, get that resection and then do nothing. First week, second week, third week, you have to wait for the surgical wound to heal before you address residual tumor cells. And that's by anywhere from one to six weeks of daily external beam radiation, where the patient has to be shuttled back and forth to a radiation clinic. They typically lose their hair, they're nauseous. Mm -hmm. They have to depend on someone else to shuttle them, usually. And if it worked, it would all be worth it, but it just doesn't. These tumors come roaring back with today's standard of care. I call it the substandard of care, and that's how we're treating patients day in and day out now. And so ours is different because gamma tiles are deployed in the last five minutes of the tumor resection procedure. So four radiation seeds are embedded within a collagen tile matrix, and those tiles are used to do just that. You have a cavity that's been created by removing the tumor in a safe way, and you tile that cavity, surgically close the wound, one and done. That's it. Twice the dose of radiation within that cavity than one can achieve from external sources and you'd say, well, isn't that dangerous for the remaining brain tissue, the eloquent brain tissue that remains? No, because of the elegantly simple design. Mm -hmm. Seeds within the cavity have been tried for 20 years. So the, the, the simplicity of it is you embed the seeds within a biocompatible, bioresorbable material, collagen, and that structural offset for the seeds protects the remaining eloquent brain tissue, but does provide twice the dose and eliminates residual tumor cells. So that's, that's the improvement. So how many doctors, how many patients? Well, one would think, right, with 650 centers that treat patients with operable brain tumors that we would have, we got clearance in the middle of 2018 we launched the technology in a limited fashion in early 2019, full market release coinciding with a global pandemic, mm -hmm. middle of March of 2020. You would think that at least 649 of them would have adopted by now, mm -hmm. right? We have 100 adopting centers around the country. So with this substandard of care being, <laughs> being utilized over and over and over again and patients not doing well, um, it, it, I think that's been the most surprising thing for me when you have something that is clearly better and we have growing and growing amounts of data that prove this, that the community would not have embraced this uh, certainly more enthusiastically than they have. We're happy with the progress we've made. We've got five clinical studies going on to collect randomized control trial data. We don't have that data. It takes time and it's got to mature. And so uh, we're, we're making progress on that. But off to a great start, and at the same time, can't believe the resistance, especially in the radiation oncology community, to do something different than the way they've been treating patients for 20 years. 
You know, it's, I'm it's, done. Is that it? No, ha- have I offended no, anybody no, no. yet? Okay. Oh, honey, I, I've been offending people all week. You got to get in line. All I heard last <laughs> time was you're the most connected person. And I was going to say that. My gosh, if you don't know Joan and you're in Arizona and you're in life sciences, you're missing something, right? Well, that's because I know Matt Likens. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, Joan. No, but the, you know, I, I, I understand and I feel the pain, right? The, the, the challenge of getting a better opportunity for patients adopted is a challenge across multiple life science. I mean, we have vaccines that have been proven to prevent childhood diseases and we're having an adoption problem right now on childhood vaccines. Hmm. Okay. So getting people to change is difficult. Um, getting the smartest people to change sometimes is the most difficult and you are dealing with brain surgeons. Very smart people. <laughs> right. <Yes. laughs> um, so, I mean, you've ha- helped over a thousand patients at this point. Last, last time I checked, it was it's, around that number. We've uh, 15 more this week All right. <laughs> so far. <laughs> but, so, so hopefully that's 15 more people that are going home to their families and, and are going to live to see their children or their grandchildren. Well, and to, to be clear, we're not curing the disease. It, right? You're slowing it down. We're slowing it down significantly. We're improving quality of life phenomenally. Yes, and, and we, are, we are greatly extending the time to the next recurrence of their tumor. And we have 250 patients now in our registry study across, and it's not just glioblastoma, although mm-hmm. that's the worst, right. but it's METs and it's meningiomas and it's first time and it's recurrent. Uh, and we're having tremendous success across all of those uh, uh, indications. So, so collaboration, bringing together different parts of the industry. And you speak, you know, I, I, I jokingly said the brain surgeons, right? And then you have the radiologists, right? And you have all of the other people that are part of the treatment team for the patient. Mm-hmm. And, and there's also all of the drugs that we're now trying to move through the blood brain barrier, because as we heard earlier this morning, um, cancer is, is, is very smart. It will move to the one area that you didn't put the pesticide down on, mm-hmm. right? And then if the weed pops up. So um, how are you working with the, the therapeutic organizations and people like that to talk about and the oncology organizations on how we can build better total care for patients beyond just what you're doing with Gamtile? I, I think that's our opportunity moving forward. Um, so if you have an operable brain tumor, typically it has got to be removed, mm-hmm. right? That mass has got to go. And so that's where we're focused now. Uh, we have many institutions that will not use gamma tile because it's not written into their immunotherapy clinical mm-hmm. protocol, their gene therapy clinical protocol. Even so, write it into the protocol. Well, that means that their randomization may have to be Maybe further done. randomized in order to take into account mm-hmm. that iteration of treatment. So we understand that. So the next step, and in fact, there are lots of folks coming to us now saying, uh, maybe we should do a clinical study together. I mean, we're still a startup. We're still mm-hmm. striving. And again, I'm, as a startup, we, we have our goal on uh, self-sustaining <laughs> a cash flow at some point in the future, and there's only so much you can do. Yeah. So, so we, would, we would look to expand into that area and make it part of the overall approach to do this because you're still going to need that surg- surgery mm-hmm. uh, and, and you still have to address residual cells. Yeah. yeah, wouldn't it be nice if you you were the companion medical device for, for all brain? Why not? That's right. Why not? <laughs> well, maybe yeah. you should be talking to the FDA. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. So let let's go a different way. So maybe, you know, maybe Stan could help me raise thirty million dollars in he, funding he, and that grants. That was non dilutive. Yeah, and and Elsa and Mark. I mean, to have such a fast start uh, on your. Um, commercial uh, opportunity is tremendous because I'm sure you're facing a lot of that resistance, something new, and, and then using distributors or agents, however that is, is also they have other products they're selling, getting their focus. So yep. sitting through this, I'm just listening to 
a lot of the scars that, that I have are being opened as we go through this. We're ripping off the band-aids, right? Right, right. This is, so, I didn't realize it'd be so painful. So, well, let's, let's look, at, look back. Um, you weren't here this morning. You were just getting back from Europe. But um, so Marianne Guerrero was here talking about her aesthetics company. Mm -hmm. um, when you and I first met, you were running an aesthetics company. Yes. Yeah, and they call it aesthetics aesthetic medicine, right? Aesthetic medicine. Has nothing to do with medicine, okay? It has to do like, do I look better today after that treatment than yesterday? Yeah. You know, um, I guess it could at some point. And we, what we try to do is play on that to say, gee, if one looks better, then maybe they, they feel, feel better. better. Maybe they're more confident because their countenance is yeah. younger, more vibrant. That's a bit of a stretch, okay? Well, but anyway. But it's a great field, it, and there's a lot of money. <laughs> and if your technology actually works, it, it's, uh, uh, it pays. Well, and it I also, I think, helped with the company that you're leading now because you are now a proven entrepreneur with a very successful exit behind you who made money for VCs, mm -hmm. so they'll talk to you. Yes. Yeah, and I think um, if you've done it once, or better yet, if you've done it multiple times, everyone thinks that, well, gee, you, you must know the formula, right? <laughs> the fact is there's no formula, and it's no easier, you know, when you go back at it again. Yeah. Different set of problems. I call it wrestling alligators. Mm -hmm. It depends on which one you're going to wrestle today because they're, they're always out there. So as we, um, you know, look out there, and, you know, everybody likes to focus on the great, you know, you're bioscience company here, you're the fast lane company, you're the this company. Not everything works. Without naming names, what are some of the lessons that you learned from the, from the companies that didn't necessarily work that have helped you to build the companies that are working? Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm remiss in not thanking you and and the voting group to uh, name us as it's quite humbling, actually. Um, there are a lot of uh, valuable life science companies. We've heard from them over the course of this week, and so it's quite an honor uh, for us to accept this. And I accept it on behalf of 65 folks that we have now at GT uh, MedTech, and of course Shane Brown was right. there accepting last night. And I saw some pictures today. You know, we had a ni nice group there, so congratulations on that. It's a real honor for us. Well, you earned it. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, so, lessons learned. Um, so, I went to a startup company after 23 years at Baxter Healthcare, mm -hmm. working in blood collection, transfusion medicine, hemophilia, immunotherapy, mm -hmm. um, uh, several other clinical conditions. Um, and so, in five years in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, which of course everybody knows is the hub of startup and medical technology <laughs> and life sciences, I should have known that if this is in Fort Lauderdale, <laughs> this it can't be real. It was real that they'd raised $180 million of venture capital. Yeah. The lead investor was Texas Pacific Group mm -hmm. with 14 different technologies under license. Uh, and other uh, major corporate investors like Quest Diagnostics, Medtronic, um, Procter & Gamble Pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. And so with that, and with the 180, I said, well, if I'm going to leave Baxter at any point in time, maybe this is the time. So in five years there, not the CEO, uh, but I, I uh, contributed uh, mm -hmm. to uh, the failure of that company, uh, I learned everything not to do in a startup. Right. Yeah. And so um, we should have... Uh, managed portfolio management with those 14 technologies. There were two or three that looked more promising that we could get to market sooner. Our CEO at the time didn't see it that way. He felt like a licensing agreement is like a child. And so if you have 14 children, do you treat several of the children more favorably than the others? And of course the answer, I, I don't know. Yes. Who has 14 children, first of all? <laughs> and they weren't children, but but we could have focused more of our resources on several of them that looked most promising. We failed to do that. And even $180 million, you know, goes doesn't, away. Yeah, it doesn't Faster go than one far. could imagine. Yeah. Yes. So. So. You've done a really good job of raising money for the companies that you lead. 
you're one of the top money raisers of CEOs that are here in Arizona over time. Is there a secret to success in raising money? Yes. So hire the best people you can. <laughs> and then uh, I think set the direction of the company, establish the right culture, uh, focus the resources appropriately, and let really talented people do their jobs. Okay, so that we, you and I have spent hours on stage in the past just talking about people and the importance of people and the importance of team. And, and as you all have heard several times today, especially in the earliest stages, team is everything. Okay, there's lots of cool technology out there. If you don't have a team that can execute, you're not gonna get funded. So when you're starting out, how do you, how do you attract that talent? How do you get those people to want to be part of your team? So um, I think building a network is so important. And again, you've been credited with being outstanding at that over time. And what happens when one is in a large corporation over a period of time, I think your world becomes narrower mm -hmm. and narrower. I didn't realize how narrow my network was during those 23 years at Baxter until I got out and started looking for talent. Um, and so I think you know one lesson, another lesson learned is to be very active at developing that network from day one. That's what I tell my children, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and they do that proactively. And I and I think it just pays off in so many ways. Yeah, um, it does. Yeah, and and so um, the question. The question is, how do you how? Okay, if I'm an entrepreneur and I'm starting out and I, I don't have a lot of money, yeah. and I need to have talent or nobody's ever going to give me any money, how do I attract talent? Well, you, you also, the, the same way you sell your opportunity to a venture capital firm or to an investor is the way you sell it to potential employees. So I think it's really important. So day two uh, with GT MedTech, Brian Martin and I, first two employees, and we sat down and said, okay, so what's our purpose as an organization? And Brian was saying, what do you mean purpose? You know, we, <laughs> we, we just established the Delaware Corporation <laughs> yesterday. And I said, yeah, and we have to raise money. We have to figure out who we are and what we stand mm -hmm. for and what our operating principles are. And do we have a big, hairy, audacious goal? So I, I think the leadership has got to really think hard and think through that in as much detail as you can and then come out with something that you truly believe in and then you have to be authentic about it. And then all of your decision making has gotta be governed by w what that North Star is. And if you operate that way and you're convincing and it's a worthwhile cause, then you attract really good people. Yeah. Yeah. And really good friends. Yeah, and, and great friends over time yeah. as well. So as, you know, as we look out across, and, and you weren't here last night, so I, I'll give you fair warning. And I don't have a pen. Is that you it? You don't have a pen. Okay. <laughs> Can I get a pen? <laughs> yes, Dylan, get the man a pen. So I feel like I, I'm going to the prom. Uh, can I get pinned? <laughs> that, yeah, you're going to get pinned. Okay. And not only are you going to get pinned, but this is a 10 year commitment. Ah, okay. So, okay. yeah, is there money involved? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, we as a community are accepting the challenge and making the commitment to double the size of the bioscience sector in Arizona by 2033. Excellent. And so all these people that you see wearing these pins are part of the team that are going to make it happen. I think you've earned it to pin. Well, thank you. Yeah. So um, Dylan's going to get that for you. I did see the work that McKinsey had done as part of the Greater Phoenix Economic mm -hmm. Council Healthcare Innovation uh, Group, and I was really, really pleased with that. Thank you. Great thing. You don't, you don't want to pin me? Okay. Okay. No, I'll, I'll do that. You can hold this. You mentioned the need for phlebotomists. Uh, is there a phlebotomist <laughs> in the house? This is no bloodletting, is it? No, there's no bloodletting. Okay. This is not a blood. <laughs> and we're not Vikings or something. They live in Minnesota. 
Oh. Vikings, Minnesota. Oh, sure. Get it? Yeah, they haven't won a game yet. <laughs> Ouch! Oh, oh baby. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> Doesn't he look beautiful? Great, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the pen. Now you got to wear that for the next 10 years, and, and you have to explain to your wife that another woman pinned you today. Okay. <laughs> She'll understand. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He's always Joan. No, but the, the thing that's so important is as we are building this together, and you have been so generous with your time, not, not just when you're like – brain dead after being on a plane for 10 hours and flying across oceans. Is, is it that obvious? And, no. <laughs> but um, but also the work that you've done with the Flynn Foundation and the time that you've spent with the students at ASU and and all of the times that, that you share. You're running a company. You're raising money. You have a family. Why do you make the time to do that? Yeah, so I, I did a lot more than that in the 15 months that I was retired after Althera went, went away to, to Mertz Pharmaceuticals. And, uh, um, you know, and, and then I had the, the good fortune of meeting the five brain tumor specialist mm -hmm. founders uh, at, uh, who were at the Barrow Neurological Institute mm -hmm. at the time. Um, so I haven't been able to do as much of that, you know, with these responsibilities. But I, I did want to talk just a second about how this is really an Arizona story. Mm -hmm. You know, starting with those five individuals and really led by Dr. David Brockman, who was a founding radiation oncologist, had been the director of radiation oncology for 15 years at the Barrow. It was his invention, yep. although he says, no, it's the work of the, the, the five. Mm -hmm. Peter Nakaji, founding neurosurgeon, mm -hmm. who's now the chair of all of neurosciences at Banner Health. Um, and in the two of them, two other radiation oncologists and their clinical coordinator. And so running into them and understanding the outstanding data they were able to generate at the Barrow on, gosh, 96 patients treated for 108 tumors across everything mm -hmm. and this significant impact they had on extending lives and especially extending the time to the next recurrence of a tumor, which we've been able to replicate and even improve upon mm -hmm. in the real world. There are no gotchas with this technology. It is working and it's working every day. So, but that was the start in Arizona. And then as we formed the company, um, uh, ATI, uh, Arizona mm -hmm. Technology Investors, was a major investor in our seed round. MedTech Venture Partners mm -hmm. out of the Bay Area led that. Uh, and ATI has come in on, on every other. And ATI is not just Arizona Technology Investors, it's Desert Angels as well with Joanne McMaster. So right now it's Bob Deline and Jim mm -hmm. Gulka ran that group for years. And so, so that was tremendous. You mentioned Flynn, you know, and we were able, uh, just as Anuncia was, to benefit from uh, their generosity, uh, as well as the ACA uh, Innovation uh, Award Challenge, uh, which is non-dilutive financing at that stage of a company is really important. Mm -hmm. I have to mention the city of Mesa, because our first year and a half, we were in launch point in downtown Mesa for next to nothing. And so to have almost a rent-free situation in the early stage makes all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and so I can go on. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And, and so it just, it just continues. And then we're able to get some former Ulthera, really talented folks on board with this company um, and, and also um, continue uh, to, do, to do well locally. Now, if we can only get the Barrow Neurological Institute to now adopt the technology that was developed there, yeah, any ideas on that? I'll be available in, during the reception. Oh, but but you know that story. Yeah, I know that story, and we're not putting that on the internet. Okay. Okay, no. Um, but I, I, I do promise that at some point in the future, we'll, we'll have lunch with some of my friends over there, and we'll, we'll have just a, con a nice conversation. You, you have why. friends in high places, let me tell you. <laughs> so... Um, Let's talk about um, the future for GT Medical. Not, you know, it, it's nice that you've achieved all these things and you're in some amazing hospitals. You're in 100 hospitals 
some of them that are household names. And there are four or five more household names about to come on board. Great. Okay. Should so I mention them? Go, well, <laughs> uh, wait a minute. So I've had this conversation with three or four entrepreneurs today. Or is it signed, sealed, and delivered? It's and not, so I won't mention it. Then don't mention it. <laughs> but, um, but as soon as it is signed, sealed, then you send me a press release and I will share it with everybody. Will do. All right. Yeah. So, but looking forward, okay, what is the future for GT Medical Technologies? So we're really excited. When we came to market initially, um, so we use a radioactive isotope. It's cesium-131. It has a nine-and-a-half-day, 9.7-day half-life. And so logistics are a challenge for us in that we have to get it to the hospital a day before it's implanted in the patient. It's got to be implanted with the right therapeutic window, right? You have to have the right dose. And you have about a 24-hour leeway with that. Not a lot of time. And so we required seven days mm -hmm. from getting an order to being able to get the seeds from our supplier, um, assemble them into gamma tiles, package them, ship them across country for third-party sterilization, ultimately to the hospital 24 hours before that surgery is scheduled. By the end of this year, we'll be able to turn every order around in two days. So that will allow us to be eligible for such a a much larger number of procedures. Many of these brain tumors are emergent in nature, and you go to the emergency room and they do a scan and say, we've got to get you in within the next 48 yeah. to 72 hours. We have not been eligible for those mm -hmm. up till now. We will be uh, moving forward. So that's very exciting for us. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, there are other things that are happening that will that are very exciting as far as the company being able to control its own future. Okay. I'll, I'll, and I'll just leave it at that. Leave it at that. Yeah. All right. You hit the lottery. Did you, did you like win the Irish sweepstakes when yeah, you were you know, there? I, I, I don't, can't remember <laughs> when I've ever bought a lottery ticket. I just. You, hey, you can't win know, if I, you don't play. That, I don't even know how <laughs> to do it. But. So um, with all of the things that, that have been going right, Okay, and there are some things that you still want to see get better. As a serial entrepreneur in this marketplace, what are some of the things that we can do as a community to help create more companies like yours? Well, I think, I mean, I heard the discussion last. I think there are a lot of great things underway. And, and AZ Bio is right in the middle of all of them. So you should take a lot of pride in that. But I think the community in general just seems to be very open to collaboration. Uh, and Elsa mentioned it. It just seems like whatever you need, there are folks out there who are willing. Gee, I know someone here. Or I can make a connection there. Uh, and, and I think that just has to continue. I don't see any reason why it would not. Um, so the, the whole money thing and should there be more venture capitalists in Arizona, I, I think I, I don't buy that. There needs to be more good, strong companies to attract investment. Well, yeah, it's a combination of things. So smart money finds really good ideas. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I, I think you, money goes over state borders and mm -hmm. internationally. Oh, yeah. Okay. So our two largest investors, one is UK-based and mm -hmm. the other is the Netherlands-based. And they both have their U.S. offices in Boston, so that's convenient for us. There's Boston again, you know. <laughs> and they love coming to Arizona, <laughs> you know, in the, in the wintertime. You know, I came back here thinking that summer would be over. No. Is it a high of 106 today or something? Anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, well, actually, the president was is here today, and so everything's heating up because he, the president's here. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So um, before I open it up to questions, because I'm sure that they have questions for you. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> um, any closing thoughts that you want to share? No, I, it really is a, a privilege to do this, and I do it on behalf of uh, all of our, our team. Uh, it's... Uh, Really a good group, I'm proud to work with uh, everybody as part of the team, and we are driven by helping each patient. Every patient should get this opportunity. And all 650 of these centers should at least adopt gamma tile therapy. Not that it's right for every patient, but at least add it to your arsenal of uh, treatment options for these patients. 
on average, with a newly diagnosed glioblastoma, a patient lives 18 months. You know, and we can extend that significantly. And we can extend the time to the first recurrence, and after that first recurrence, we can ha have gametile again and extend the time to an additional recurrence. And so we're generating that data now, and it's gonna be very powerful. So uh, that, that would be it. As long as we continue to focus on what's best for patients, the business seems to work out okay. <laughs>